Good morning. I'm Jeff from the Overwatch team. Very excited to be here with an awesome developer update because we are introducing the 24th hero to Overwatch today. So we're here to talk about Arissa. Arissa is a brand new character. A lot of you probably haven't heard of her before, but she has a really cool backstory. So we want to talk a little bit about that and introduce you to how Arissa came to be. So I'm going to back way up to the Omnic Crisis, which as many of you know, was this terrible world war that happened where robots sort of took over the world, uh, humans fought back, Overwatch was a big part of that. Uh, we eventually struck peace with the Omnics, but during that Omnic Crisis, there were many different Omnic units used in the battles. So as you know, Bastion, as an example, was one of those units that was used in the battle. Well, there was another unit called the OR-14, which was specifically a unit designed to fight against the humans and be part of the Omnic Crisis. Well, fast forward many years later after the Omnic Crisis, peace has been struck. We're in the city of Nimbani where humans and Omnics get along great. It's actually one of the most technologically advanced and peaceful cities on the planet. Uh, but they start, to, they start to run into some strife from a local villain who you might have heard of before. Uh, his name is Doomfist. And in order to start to guard against Doomfist's attack and protect the city against any other dangers that, that might come about, the citizens of Nimbani developed a more advanced version of the old OR-14 unit, which they, not surprisingly, called the OR-15. So it was one version higher. Well, the OR-15s initially were okay and suited for battle, but they eventually lost horrifically against Doomfist, specifically in a battle that took place in the Nimbani airport. And most of the citizens of Nimbani just gave up on the OR-15, said, you know, they failed miserably. They're laying in pieces scattered throughout the airport terminal. This is no good. You know, we give up on these things. Well, there was a young girl who didn't give up hope. Her name was Efi. Um, she was an extremely smart girl, excellent at science, robotics, mathematics, programming. She still had hope. She still believed in what these OR-15 units were supposed to do for her city. So she sort of, as a, as a scrappy young girl, took the pieces back to her workshop, um, worked on this unit, and created the evolution to what the OR-14 and 15s were and named it Orissa. And she made a single heroic unit that wasn't supposed to be part of a huge battalion, but was supposed to be a specific individual hero and named it Orissa. So Orissa, in terms of the timeline of Overwatch, is a brand new hero just on the scene. So we have yet to see what Orissa is really gonna do. So that's part of what's very exciting. Most of our, our heroes have a big historical background. Um, we've seen them succeed and fail in their past histories where Orissa is new on the scene and it is Efi who has created her, who is really encouraging her to become a new hero of the future. Now let's talk about mechanically what Orissa does and what she brings to the game and why we designed Orissa the way we did. So let's talk about her abilities first. Uh, first of all, she's a tank. So she will be in the tank role. Her primary weapon is called the fusion driver. It's Think of it as a projectile-based machine gun. Um, she moves a little bit more slowly when she's shooting it, but it has a good range to it, probably um, more range than almost any of our tanks have on their weapons. Maybe Zarya's um, alternate fire goes you know, equally far, but she's got a good range on it, good rate of fire, um, really high sustain weapon with a large clip size. So that's the fusion driver. The alternate fire ability on the fusion driver is of extreme utility. So it sends out basically a pulse. Think of Zarya's graviton ch charge, which is Zarya's ultimate, but it sends out a single pulse out fr from her. And then you can click your alternate fire again and it will bring any affected targets within 
um, its radius for a very short period of time. So it's like a little mini graviton surge that she can do more often. And mostly she's using it for positioning or repositioning her targets. Um, it also, you know, briefly puts them in place. So if you have a, a teammate who's a Widowmaker or a Hanzo or even Orissa with her, her great range on her gun um, can shoot towards that and it really helps you line up some critical shots that can happen. You can also pull people around corners with it. So that's a really uh, fun ability that she has. She also has a, a tank ability called Fortify. And what Fortify does is it, it not only makes Orissa a little bit tougher, but it prevents Orissa from sustaining any sort of crowd control ability that might be used against her. So like the most obvious examples are maybe Farah's concussive blast, um, which normally knocks people around, you know, moves them out of position. If Arissa has Fortify on and she's going over that bridge in the gardens of Lijiang Tower, uh, you can't knock her off at that point. She's, she's in place. Plus, um, she doesn't take as much damage as well. So Fortify is a very useful, very straightforward uh, tank ability. Now, one of Arissa's most defining abilities is her protective barrier. Uh, the protective barrier is, you, you know, think along the lines of Reinhardt's barrier shield or Winston's barrier bubble that he throws out. The protective barrier has quite a range to it. It's roughly the size and shape of about half of Winston's bubble, and it goes out anywhere where she targets it. it so it could be in front of her, could be slightly off to the side. Um, she could use it in close on herself, or she could use it, you know, further in front of her to shield an ally, and it creates a barrier um, that has uh, the normal amount of damage it can take, like other barriers in the game, you can destroy it. Um, things that go through barriers, like Symmetra's alternate fire, will go through this. Um, so it's got a lot of utility to it, um, and a lot of use, and a lot of protectiveness. Um, and lastly, there's her ultimate ability, which is her supercharger. So she wears this drum-like item on her back. Um, when her ultimate's up, she can take it off her back, throw it down on the ground, and it's effectively damage boosting anybody who's in line of sight of the supercharger. Now the thing about the supercharger is, is that the enemy team can kill the supercharger. So you really need to make sure to protect your supercharger either with your protective barrier, or maybe you wanna put the supercharger, you know, just out, off to the side, out of line of sight of your enemies, but in line of sight of your teammates. So there's some gameplay there to figuring out where the supercharger is, because if the enemy team kills it right away, then your team loses all of that benefit. Now, with Orissa, I really wanna talk about why are we adding another tank? Because I know that topic will come up and a lot of people are sort of wondering, you know, how do we pick what heroes come next? And there's a lot of uh, reasons for that, but primarily with Orissa, we were looking at our tank lineup and, you know, we have heroes like D.Va and Winston who are much more disruptive in terms of tanking. They're much more defined by their mobility. They like to get in, they like to get out, they don't stay in one place for too long. They cause a lot of disruption and harassment. Um, you've got somebody like, um, like Roadhog who, um, he's all about punishing people who are out of position and positioning himself to punish people who are out of position. So, you know, he plays a very different sort of role. But we were spending a lot of time looking at Reinhardt and saying, what really defines Reinhardt and why is he so important and critical to Overwatch? And we started to describe Reinhardt, the, the term that we would use on the development team was we'd call him an anchor tank. And what we mean by that is that the, Reinhardt almost anchors the entire team. The team, it, with a properly positioned Reinhardt, the team builds and positions around Reinhardt. Um, because he doesn't have a lot of mobility abilities, and because he has that protective barrier in front of him, you sort of know where to position yourself and when the team is gonna engage or disengage based upon what Reinhardt is doing. So we like this idea of what we kept calling an anchor tank. And we felt like players needed more options 
in that sort of anchor tank role. We wanted another tank that teams could build around and position around. Um, and even though we think that tanks like Winston and Diva are really great in what they bring to the game, they're not necessarily bringing what Reinhardt was bringing. So we hope that in Orisa, there is now another option to a low mobility tank, but uh, one that brings a high amount of protection in her protective barrier, where you kind of see her on the battlefield and go, oh, okay, we're approaching from, from this angle. I, I will get behind Orisa, I'll follow Orisa, she'll, she'll put the barrier up, we'll follow her in and we'll engage in, in that regard. So we know that there are concerns about barriers in the game. Um, we've actually, you know, we've been working on Bassi and retuning him to be more effective against barriers. We do have some very uh, effective heroes against barriers right now. For example, Symmetra with her alternate fire goes directly through them. Um, obviously, Reinhardt's fire strike goes through barriers as well. Um, Junkrat's grenades do tremendous damage to barriers and will melt them very quickly. Um, and if barriers become too much of a thing, we're looking at those in terms of balance and, and how to adjust accordingly. Most of all, we just wanted to bring a new and exciting hero to Overwatch. Not only does she fill a role that we felt was very needed, not just a tank, but one of these anchor tanks that you really build a, a team around. We also felt like Orisa was visually challenging. We often hear that, you know, when it comes to female characters, they tend to be more limited in their size and appearance, where the male characters get these really like big and challenging visual designs that are very exciting. And we've heard a lot of desire to have a very um, visually challenging female character. So um, that was fun for us to explore as well. So we really wanted to bring that to Overwatch. Um, and most of all, we wanted to bring a really cool hero with a lot of backstory that really rounded out our current cast that is not only these old school heroes who took part in the old Overwatch and Talon and Omnic battles of the past, but really um, brought something new and gave us some new hope to look forward to what are the heroes of the future gonna bring to Overwatch. So we're really looking forward to all the feedback we're gonna get on Orisa. Um, we're gonna keep working on her until she's just right and just perfect. We hope you enjoy her and uh, thank you very much. We'll, we'll see you soon.